Day 20. Montreal. I awoke a little later than usual, but much better rested than the night before. Car camping in a lovely park right by the water and away from the noise made for a wonderful slumber. The new spot I discovered yesterday, the Parc Clementine de la Rosilière, was perfect for me. Today the weather was going to be hot and humid, typical of Montreal during this time of year. Throughout this trip, I generally created a regular routine for every city I'd stayed in for that duration. So for Montreal, my routine was to have breakfast at Tim Hortons, head over to the gym, have lunch, and then explore the city. Today's destination was Vieux-Port de Montreal, or the Old Port of Montreal. I took Auto Route 40 again, down to the historic center, and found a place to park. I started walking through the streets, curiously looking through the windows of old buildings that would have had many stories to tell over the decades of existence. I was greeted by the Notre Dame de Bon Secours Chapel as my first major sign of a strong Catholic influence here in Quebec. I continued further down towards the port where I came across the Grand Rue de Montreal, the famous Ferris wheel that took visitors up to view the surroundings at elevation. The viewport de Montreal was busy, much busier than I expected it to be. Quite the opposite of downtown Victoria back in British Columbia, which was a ghost town. I walked around and from the distance I could see the Jacques Cartier Bridge leading Montreal to Ile saint Helene and beyond. Exploring the promenade, it seemed like everyone in Quebec, or at least everyone in Montreal, was enjoying themselves and living life as if the COVID-19 pandemic was science fiction. It was an escape from the communist-like restrictions I was experiencing back in British Columbia. There was a zip line that offered high-speed aerial adventure along the promenade, and I did strongly consider exploring this, but I decided to continue exploring the area. Looking back towards where I parked, I seen the rearward side of the Notre Dame de Bon Secure Chapel, with the Virgin Mary looking out towards the St. Lawrence River. Heading south, I came across a lovely pedestrian area filled with trendy shops and cool restaurants. This was Place Jacques Cartier. The Quebecois knew how to enjoy themselves in the summer heat, and by now it was getting extremely hot. I continued north on Place Jacques Cartier, and I came across the Nelson Monument a monument commemorating a battle that occurred long before Canada was ever a country. At the top of Place Jacques, Place Jacques Cartier was Montreal City Hall, a historic building with typical solid stone construction of an era long ago. I could only imagine the scandals that occurred behind closed doors here. From there, I headed back down towards the water and, and explored the street of Rue St. Paul. All the streets here seemed to be named after saints, and every street here looked like it was from a completely different era. Of course it was. After all, this was Montreal. It was great to see how these streets were pedestrian only, and the city was full of life. There were street performers, food vendors, musicians, magicians, and everything imaginable in this historic and family-friendly area of the center of Montreal. Far from chaotic, at least for now, and at least by Quebec standards, Montreal was really impressive. There were so many cool shops and restaurants in the, in the area, but its layout was such that it wasn't sensory overload. After exploring the area, I headed up to one of the most famous areas of Montreal, the Place d'Armes. On my way, I discovered several interesting sculptures along the streets. This area was now open to vehicle traffic and the architecture was slightly different from the area I was in earlier. From the distance, I could see the Basilique Notre Dame de Montreal towering above. When I arrived, I was disappointed as the Basilica was not open due to renovations. The building itself was still mesmerizing to see in person like the CN Tower was in Toronto or the Parliament Building in Ottawa, 
but the basilic the notre dame de montreal was a symbol of the city the stonework was impeccable and i could only imagine the expertise of the craftsmen who built this basilica as if their hands were guided by god himself at the place d'armes it was busy like the rest of the areas i had visited earlier but despite the crowds i was able to take a number of photos this historic center of montreal was vibrant with history culture and bound by religion that made it feel like europe was still remaining in canada the quebecois are proud of their heroes were statues commemorating those who have contributed served and sacrificed to keep to keep the quebecois culture alive names like jean mons charles de moyne lambert close and of course the people the iroquois these are all found on the on the maisonneuve monument at the center of place armes by now i had become hungry and it was late afternoon so i decided to get an early dinner I made my way back to my beast, found a highly rated sushi restaurant, and placed an order for pickup. From there, I drove to another park, Park P, where I could wander into a cavern. Unfortunately, the cavern was closed, but to my delight, the sushi was incredible. I sat on a bench enjoying my early dinner as the sun began to set. I decided to stay until the darkness set in and from there I would return to my car camping spot for the evening. Despite it being somewhat early, the combination of the heat plus the sights I had seen today were enough for me to decide to retire for the night. My first day in Montreal was spectacular and I could only imagine what lay in store for me tomorrow. Subscribe to the travel experience experience de voyage channel tap the bell and join the conversation on the comment section below